the efficiency of an algorithm is referred to as its computational cost. And I'll emphasize this property for each container and its operations as I present them throughout this chapter. For this purpose, I'll now introduce a formal framework used to classify algorithms according to their computational cost. The first and most efficient category of algorithms are those that have a constant computational cost. These algorithms operate in a fixed amount of time that does not depend on the input size. If the algorithm we're talking about is a container operation, the terms input size or problem size refer to the number of elements currently present in the container. If we write a Python code for a constant cost algorithm and place it inside of a function, the body of that function is typically characterized by a set of sequential statements with no loops in them. These statements may optionally include conditional execution. I'm going to show you a plot that intuitively represents the behavior of an algorithm in each of the cost categories I'm presenting here. In these plots, the x-axis represents the problem size, which in the context of a container operation is given as the number of elements currently present in the container, while the y-axis represents the algorithm's execution time. I'm intentionally omitting any specific units from either axis, since all we care about here is the shape of the plot in each case and how those shapes can pair with one another rather than the exact absolute values. A constant computational cost is characterized by a flat line as shown here. And it doesn't matter whether this line appears higher or lower in the plot. All that matters is that the execution time doesn't increase as the problem size grows. On the plot, we can pick a given problem size and read the associated execution time. Then we can observe that doubling or tripling the problem size provides the exact same execution time. That's what constant cost means. An example of a container operation that runs in constant cost is obtaining the nth element of a list. The time it takes for Python to return this element won't depend on how many elements are currently present in the list. We'll revisit this idea when we cover lists in detail later in the chapter. Here, I'll also introduce a formal notation commonly used as a shorthand way of referring to the computational cost of an algorithm called the big O notation, represented with capital letter O followed by a mathematical expression in parentheses. In this case, a constant computational cost is alternatively referred to as big O of one. Using this in a sentence, we could say that the cost of accessing the nth element of a list is constant or big O of one. The next common category of algorithms in increasing order of computational cost is formed of those algorithms operating in a logarithmic cost. The code implementing such algorithms is typically characterized by the presence of a loop running a set of sequential statements. In this loop, the input size n affects the number of iterations t executed in the loop as follows. For a problem size of eight elements, we'd need three iterations in the loop because two to the three is equal to eight. For a problem size of 16 elements, we'd need four iterations in the loop because two to the four is 16. For 32 elements, we'd need five iterations. Two to the five is 32. For 64 elements, six iterations. Two to the six is 64, and so on. In this type of algorithms, the problem size n is equal to two to the t, where t is the number of iterations executed in the loop. Or in other words, the number of iterations t is equal to the logarithm in base 2 of the problem size n. You may remember from your math classes that the logarithm is the reverse operation from the exponentiation. We can say that the loop runs log base 2 of n iterations. This plot shows the layout of a curve representing the problem size n in the x-axis and the algorithm's execution time in the y-axis. As you can see, this curve keeps a positive slope, but the curve flattens progressively as n increases. A characteristic feature of a logarithmic curve is that each increment of equal size in the execution time is attained by a problem size that is doubled in each case. 
Although logarithmic cost algorithms are clearly less efficient than constant cost algorithms, they're still considered very efficient. Think of it this way. Running a container operation on 2 to the 20 elements, where 2 to the 20 is approximately equal to 1 million, can be done by just running 20 iterations of the loop that implements that operation. Similarly, running only 10 more iterations would solve the same problem in a container with 2 to the 30 elements, where 2 to the 30 is approximately equal to 1 billion. An example of a popular algorithm with logarithmic cost is one that searches for a particular element in a sorted list. In case you're curious, such algorithm is called binary search, but I won't present any details about it at this time. The formal notation used to represent logarithmic cost is big O of log n. If you enjoyed this content, you may watch the rest of this lesson at computersciencecam.com, linked in the description below. You'll be able to follow along with coding samples and problems in our embedded code editor. Drop your questions in the comment section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you, and happy coding!